My perception is that, um, and I'm going to talk to Ahmed about this, but from my perspective, I felt that there were a number of things happening, especially after the little protest outside the mortuary and all of that. I believe that government um, I believe is one component. I believe that Muslim practitioners need to look at getting involved uh, to try and alleviate the issue. And I believe that Muslims need to stop killing Muslims because bodies are piling up. Sorry guys, we all need to take responsibility. Ahmed, uh, you've seen some of those issues going on in Cape Town. What was your thoughts? Because I know that you started contacting us. What was your initial thoughts? Because you sounded upset. I'm very, very dis please in the manner that how Cape Town handled themselves. That is the burial organization. believe that, that everyone wasn't doing enough to try and resolve I, it? I totally believe that there was, there was no uh, force coming from the people of Cape Town and yet Cape Town is 60-70% is, is Muslim mm. and, and this should have been taken, uh, the bull should be uh, taken full on with the government. One, if the, what I've heard and I've spoken to pathologists as well as professors in Cape Town, they say that one of their mortuaries was closed and therefore they have got a backlog. If this happened in KZN, if there was a backlog, we will ship bodies out to various mortuaries and we'll make sure if there's a Muslim body, we should have given a priority. Because in terms of the standing orders, as well as the Department of Health knows that the standing orders are in place and what we have to get our bodies, Muslim bodies, out in time. Sure. So therefore, the bodies should have been released. So, so Ahmed, you, you are saying that even with the increase in the murder rate, putting pressure on the system, with that happening on one side, uh, the other one with the lack of expertise, uh, with the fact that the mortuary uh, has bodies sitting from a, a particular date um, that hasn't been autopsied, uh, you believe that the standing order, irrespective of anything, needs to remain in place. Uh, I'm asking you the question. You believe it needs to? I believe if it was in Durban or in KZ and in one of anywhere, Ladysmith, Newcastle, Tonga, in Pangani, wherever it happened in KZ, if they didn't do my body, I should have immediately went to brought a high court order and I should have compelled them to do that body, even if they had to come out in the night to do it. And if you, if they say they do not have staff, then they should have went and brought the people from the South African police services who previous was previously used to do post-mortem, bring them on board to uh, do those bodies. So, so since all of that has happened, uh, you have been contacting a number of people in, in Cape Town and you're talking about IBC perhaps launching in Cape Town. Uh, you have other bodies that are also there from an ulama perspective and all of that. How do you plan to deal with all of that? Firstly, I have been undated with, with, with the calls from Cape Town to come and s solve the problem that our brothers and sisters are, are, are having in Cape Town and this should have been dealt with long ago. I've been speaking about it about 18 months ago. I knew this was Even coming. A national formalization. National, national body. Yes. I've been speaking. I had a meeting with uh, the Jamaat al Olama. I had a meeting with United Olama Council on two instances. And they are just dragging their feet and they are doing absolutely nothing about it. And this is the repercussion of me not acting in time and this is what ha has happened to us. If we have a unified body, we bring all the burial organization under one umbrella body and they will have a voice and they will know the parameters in terms of government legislation, what is a standing order, what is the time of bodies to has to come in. They, if a uh, uh, mortuary has got overflow or do not have staff they have to take it to another mortuary if it was in, in, in uh, Woodstock and if there was five Muslim brothers and sisters or whoever it is we had nine bodies at one time and only five got released after seven days and what has upset me most and I'm disappointed in, in, in Cape Town is that you'll have set a precedent for the country.
we i have been and the whole country have been fighting to make sure that whenever a post-mortem is if the body comes in, in within the prescribed time the post-mortem must be done or the next day even if a body comes today is saturday if the body comes on on saturday after evening after six Sunday by latest 10, 11 o'clock, we got our body, we buried by, by the afternoon, the body is being buried. So Cape Town has not done that. They should have put pressure onto the government, the Department of Health, the South African, um, the South African Department of Health, and they should have put pressure on it. In terms of our standing orders, they should immediately, we should have brought a court order and we should say, no, this should have been done. One of the, 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 the key aspects is that what I perceive from our brief meeting before the show is that it appears as if you are raising an army and marching to Cape Town and saying it's time to do this. I'm not coming to Cape Town because of to come and fight with anybody in Cape Town. Neither, I only do whatever I do when it comes to for the last 25 years I'm doing this work of Deen for burial is purely for the sake of Allah. I cannot see my brothers and sisters in, in post-mortem uh, post is not done for seven and nine bodies, seven days and eight days later. It's not on. I have a question around this. And I, I don't know, it's maybe a question that was lingering in my mind as I, I started sort of getting involved with, with the mortuary issue. And that was uh, that if the murder rate does not come down, I don't see it coming down. Uh, while Mr. Zuma does what he does and everyone's doing, that's wrecking the country up, uh, the crime rate is not going to fall. If that doesn't happen, what is really the hope? I mean, we're talking about extra equipment coming in and all of that. But is that not, is that not a side issue to the fact that, that it's perhaps time to have a national formalized approach to what we're doing from a burial point of view? Um, and then on t to top that all off, do you as IBC seek engagement with current bodies on the ground that's already there? that can be usurped or dealt with um, in a cooperative manner. Because I think while you, you're doing what you're doing, it is my opinion that cooperation on various levels is imminent. Islamic Burial Council, we've been talking to the United Olama Council. We are saying to them in no uncertain term, it is high time you need a national body, so you read from the same page and talk from the same line. And you got people that who engages with government. We shouldn't have been in this dilemma if we had a fully fledged body. Furthermore, I don't think some of our uh, people are running the burial in Cape Town, they know the actual law to go to court and bring. And we got a lot of attorneys in Cape Town, advocates here in Durban. If I press one button, every one of them, attorneys as well as Advocate, they do it absolutely free, totally free. They won't charge you one cent. They will go bring an urgent application, absolutely free. So the, the East people in Cape Town have phoned me. I know lawyers, attorneys, advocates. They said, you know what? Are you ready? I said, I'll draw the papers in Durban. You just you go only and 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 take it through to court. They are all way ready to do that. It didn't happen. They said, no, no, tomorrow it will be done. Tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow, tomorrow, it, six to eight days, it's not on. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion is, the time has come, not only in Cape Town, all over the nine provinces, a national body must be formed. In Kauteng, we have already started the ball rolling in Kauteng. They have already got the structures in place. We are in early uh, January. That structure will be in place 100%. Uh, Cape Town, we need to start formulating this, this system of how KZN is. KZN is a model for the country. If the Cemeteries Association of South Africa found it fit and saw and the Pan-African uh, Pan-African Cemeteries Associ Association had a meeting at the, at the ICC for five days and when I did my presentation they actually just said you know what we have come to somebody who knows the burial industry in terms of Islamic law, in terms of Islamic uh, law, in terms of um, government legislation, what is the uh, wants and don'ts, all that was put into place and furthermore 
if we are not going to start acting now 2019 is 2019 is around the corner we're not going to get what we want to get in terms of cemeteries as well KZN we have got Islamic Burial Council as I said to you earlier in 1998 we had only eight cemeteries today IBC Islamic Burial Council has got 20 cemeteries of the Itiwini municipalities state cemeteries we are the custodians so we can bury one o'clock in the morning we can bury 10 in the evening so we are the idea behind in having a unified body is to be controlled by ourselves we must be able to be we must be able to do things what we want to do don't wait for the state state don't have monies they haven't got monies to even put an x-ray machine in cape town they don't have even it took me two and a half years to find the department of health in gale street mortuary one of the biggest uh, forensic mortuary in the province in kzn it took me two and a half years fighting them and eventually i got the state of the art x-ray machine put on there before we used to ship the bodies to various hospitals to get the x-rays done so you have to be behind them so if you got a body fighting all the causes for the, our Muslim brothers and sisters, you won't have this problem. I mean, going forward, uh, I know that you're planning to come to Cape Town, you're planning to talk to people about what you want to do, who are you calling on at the moment, and what do you require from them? My aim and object is, firstly, I want to talk to the Muslim burial services. That your undertakers? All the undertakers. Bring them on board. Get the consensus from them. What is the pitfalls we have in Cape Town? Where is the grey area? How can we solve the grey area? You're not only referring to the mortuary issue. You're talking about the generalised issues generalized. and challenges that they have. Yeah. That's the one aspect. Then the other aspect is cemeteries as well. Because eventually you want to be... Seven years ago, we in South Africa, we were 1.5 million Muslim in South Africa. Latest statistic Muslim in South Africa is 4.2 million Muslim because of all our brothers from brothers, sisters are here from Burundi, fair foreign nationals are here in the country from all over the world. They are here for greener pastures. They are here. So we have to give them a dignified Muslim burial. If you are a Muslim, our right is to bury him as a Muslim. So we have to do that. So effectively you're calling on undertakers and everyone to make contact and say let's form the IBC on a national level. And I think you stated clearly why you want to propel that on a national level. Um, my thoughts uh, uh, as a side matter is that um, I, I, I do believe that I think that there are structures in Cape Town that maybe needs to be co-opted or dealt with. However, Putting everything in perspective, it is my opinion uh, that when a person or an organization has a specified expertise, then I believe that our existing organizations must also go up th these organizations to say, deal with this on my behalf. I can manage it from, a, from, an, from an overall perspective, but I think that it's an expertise thing. That is it. So it's just my opinion, I might be wrong. Previously, before 1998, we had a burial organization, once a right to the Itiguini municipality, once a cemetery site. They take your file and they put it in file 13. But ever since Islamic Burial Council is formed, we fight with one voice. What we write to them, we get answers from them because now they know we're talking from a, a voice that has got cloud behind it, has got muscle behind it. That's the difference. That is, and it's a specialized game. You cannot get an Olama organization like when, when we were, f when IBC was formed, we invited Jamatul Olama KZN, but we made it very, very clear to them. You all will join us, but IBC is an independent organization will run all affairs about burial. So that makes it easier, but they work very closely with us, very close. If there is any, anyone goes to them on any rulings or anything about burial, immediately they divert it to us. They say, speak to IBC, 
and they, they link us up to and we write back to them is it so and so came to us under your auspices they wanted that that information there you are and we email it through to them that is the difference because it's a specialized field you cannot do uh, the ulamas cannot run burial masjid madrasas various other uh, institute it's impossible this is a specialized field and you're dealing with government all the time government legislations are ch being changed you you will find recently uh, they are going to do eventually they are going to do away with with the post-mortems uh, in, in 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 other words by opening up the body they're going to bring a state-of-the-art machine from overseas which costs in the region of between five to six million the mri machine in 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 bradford in in the uk has been already in place so they have already did the test in fact in january inshallah i'll be going down there to see how that model works but what we did 10 months ago we have already put in place the wheels in motion we called in the uh, amal all the lawyers association lawyers and advocates we call ima all the doctors we said we had a meeting with them a full house 50 or uh, together we were 50 odd including the members of islamic burial council the doctors the uh, advocates and the attorney this is what we want to do in terms of legality from the doctor's side the pathologist side we had a top forensic specialist gave us a talk on it how we can circumvent and we can get our body within 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes that's will. phenomenal and, and, and it's all working it's all tested it, it, it's, and it's in working. South Africa, it's yes working of course in the UK, UK. Mm. it's working within 10 minutes we can get our body but there is a gray area there's a huge but there because of the legislation of the justice department so def therefore I invited the lawyers and advocates now they are doing the research we are almost doing our dossier the document should be about 300 odd pages legality in terms of they have to give case reference and everything else once that come in motion we are writing up to the Minister of Justice to state in terms of our religion far as possible we don't want our bodies to be cut open or anything in terms of this religion, yeah, our right of religion, all the aspects what we want and the ulama, Jamatul ulama and all the muftis want to give their verdict and we are going to write to the minister and say give us your undertaking on this, will this hold in the court of law because if the court of law does not hold the uh, uh, MRI scan and then we have a problem so therefore we are clearing the air at the moment and we we are almost there by the time I get back from uh, overseas inshallah we will be in a better position I want to bring all the literature from the UK and give it to our government say this is it and we have got donors for it we will be the first model in KZN again then that we will spread it out to the, uh, the all the other provinces it will not only help the muslim community it will help them to expedite and bring the workload down as well so you know it's it's, it's a win-win for everyone i mean, you sound like a game changer we wish you well with all of that um, looking forward to catching up with you in the future again to find out how things are going and see how we can support what you're doing i think that uh, it's all it's also important from a from an overall perspective uh, that when somebody calls for unity on some level or the other it needs to be supported uh, we need to uh, it's my opinion that, that as a community and we don't need to be rocket scientists to think about this that we need to move away from anything that disunifies us on any level and we need to look into specific expertise to tap on to improve our positioning in our country my main aim and object is to come to Cape Town and make it simplify it for our brothers and sisters there and whatever Allah blessed me with a little bit of knowledge in the burial I need to pass that knowledge on and make it easy if we can win here we can win in Cape Town and we can win all the whole country we can win on the same issues and we will be able to make it easy for everyone that is the thing and I'm solely doing it for the pleasure of Allah and nothing else
Hamid, thank you for what you do for society. Hamid Paruk, IBC Islamic Burial Society, uh, or council rather, and um, they are looking at how to nationalize an operation so that Islamic burial and its challenges fall under one banner. Thank you for joining us. We'll catch up with him in the future as there are developments down the line. Recently we've been all talking about the mortuary issues and the backlog that's going on, um, especially in Cape Town. So one organization that is central to most of these operations is the MJC. Uh, the Deputy President, Shishri Adfatar, is with me and we also share friendship. And Shishri Adfatar is also a presenter at the Dean Channel. And I thought I'm just going to catch up with him on a very off-the-cuff discussion uh, within five minutes to find out what's the latest and we are the current challenges perhaps sitting. Sheikh, if you can perhaps look at that. Um, I must tell you that uh, you can send us some comments. Uh, if I get the comments in time, I'm most likely going to ask Sheikh those comments uh, and maybe so that he can maybe answer your questions directly. Uh, Sheikh, where are we sitting at the moment? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursalin. Sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jama'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa hlul uqratan min lisani yafqaw qawli Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh to all of you Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen First of all, we have had a very high level delegation from the Muslim Judicial Council spanning from the presidency right through to the Mufti of the MJC, Mala Taha Karan the uh, heads of Imamat Councils from Mitchell's Plain, Northern Suburbs, undertakers from the MGC Cemetery Mancom, all in one meeting, together with the head of uh, Department of Health, uh, Dr. Beth Engelbrecht, as well as Professor Martin from UCT, uh, Pathology or Forensics, as well as the head of the uh, Tigerberg Forensics and Pathology, Ms. Thompson, all of that being led by the MEC uh, for Health. We've had some robust discussions. We were serious in the in the in the discussions that we had. Uh, at times, um, I think it, uh, probably myself more. Uh, we got a bit um, heated because at the end of the day, we want to, we are not there to see that the government is looking good. We are there to say that a service that has been provided since way before 1997 has been provided, we see that service slipping away. And when that happens, then people like ourselves, when the community jumps up and we that are in the cemetery business, MGC is in the cemetery business for probably, what, 50, 60 years. Where we are sitting today is but where we've taken up from those before us. So when we see a service like that that has been entrenched in the Muslim community, where we see um, that even in 1997 there is a document from the then police commissioner Kruti, uh, because Mochiri was under the, uh, 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 under the SAPD at the time, giving a document to say that Muslim burials should get that priority and it must get that priority and him intention that in a document on the 8th of August 1997. Then in 2006 the Department of Health takes over mortuaries and um, they continue with that service, with that uh, 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 prioritizing of Muslim uh, uh, bodies for autopsy and so on. And here the MEC for health came in very nicely, I must say. When she said, while this had been, uh, uh, the Department of Health has not been responsible for the previous agreement, but because this is there, you can see this as a policy, whether it's unwritten. But it is because a policy. It's common practice all the time. That's it. Yeah. It's been common practice. So therefore, how are we going to deal with that? The Department of Health and, and so on, they have come up and says, look, we are under resource, we can't manage anymore, we have indicated, that's not our problem. Uh, sure, I, I, have a, I have a question at that point, uh, to, just to, to go directly to something, and that was that one of the viewers asked a pertinent question. 
and I think he's sitting in, in Venice at the moment. Uh, so we say hello to him, uh, Mr. Rakib. And he's saying that um, uh, when did, what, was Chihinim aware when the backlog started? Or do you feel the department was aware that the backlog was coming? Or did this all just hit to a certain point and then we decided we have a problem? From my point of view, and the department can speak for themselves, uh, my point of view is that this was poor planning. Poor plan. They must have seen this coming. This was poor budgeting. But then the Department of Health complains that they had been cut twice already. But they're also talking about the budget sharp increase in the mortality there is, rate. There is no doubt a sharp increase in the, in the gangsterism, the shooting and things. And don't make a mistake, we're going towards December again. And so we're going to see that it, sees, again. it seems normally that there is a spike in, 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 in deaths and things like that. So which means that you have to look out for those kind of things. And that is why we emphasize to the MEC, please, if these people are saying they're under-resourced, now it's laying at your door. And the MEC on her side then says, well, in this case, I'm taking it to Parliament. I'm taking it to Parliament, Wednesday that is gone. I'm taking it and I'm escalating the issue uh, to the Western Cape government. We are yet to see what is the result of that. What we did here in the meeting is that the Department of Health has, has included in the, or, 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 or increased the forensic staff by eight. Um, we want to see so how is that, that is. Is that one tangible change? They've increased staffing at the moment. They have increased staffing, but we'll have to see how it works out. Mm. We have to see what we can do. But I do want to say this also, Faisal, and that is that we also want to recognize and do say thank you to the Department of Health for prioritizing Muslim burials. Because our Nabi والسلام, says, Man lam yashkurin naz, lam yashkurin la, who has not shown thanks to mankind, has not shown thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time while doing that, we also want to see as a Muslim community, how can we do this? How can we see and look at ways where if they say they can't manage, what is it that we can do in the meantime or what is it? So what we've been doing in the background is speak to people like the IMA. We are busy setting up a meeting with the Islamic Medical Association of South Africa and asking, have you got pathologists? Because we have the Department of Health that says we don't have pathologists. And if we can bring them people amongst the Muslim community that says, okay, I'm available because they're scarce. Should, uh, then do, do at least that is something. Do we have a lack of expertise within this specific aspect of forensic pathology in our community? And if there were more of them, would they come to the fore to solve a problem? Definitely, that is what they're saying. And they're saying that they are understaffed. They need more pathologists. We should, in actual fact, encourage our young people also to go into forensics and pathology because here you can see you are needed. Um, not only that, one is also looking at this, uh, not the MRI scan thing that everybody is sending around that is in London, but also the Lodox machine uh, that is around, which I believe is at Saltover and at, at, at Tigerberg, whether one could bring in a machine like that. I saw Minister Ibrahim Patel had brought into Gauteng. It costed them 60 million rand for nine machines, which makes it about 3 million each. Maybe if the Muslim community were to tell the mortuaries, we donating, donating you a machine of 3 million rand, now we need a promise of prioritizing Muslim burials. These are all suggestions we want to take to them Should so we? that we come up and we don't just sit and do nothing. Great, yes. We must also at the same time also recognize the fact that I think that throughout time the government has and the Department of Health has prioritized all the time. Yes. Um, so we must thank them for that up till today. But now we are experiencing a problem. Does she believe that perhaps it's a time for us all to sit back and reflect and say, how ready are we for anything that might come our way as a community? Faisal, that brings us to a very important thing. And that is the rate of gangsterism and fighting that is happening and shootings that is happening. In actual fact, I want to link that. And, and I now speak only of my community, the Muslim community. And we have to ask ourselves where the Muslims are involved in, 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 in nightclub owning, 
and in drugs and all of this stuff is this that one of the reasons why Allah Ta'ala is keeping rain away from the Western Cape because all of these things are happening at one time the gangsters and the shooting there's no rain and so on so one has to ask yourself as an ummah are we so far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are we so far from following the sunnah of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is a, a, a research that has been done and says that 5% of the of the Muslims are making salah on time then what is the rest what are we doing so we have to work on gangsterism also because you can now see it has an effect on when it comes to the mortuaries we have to speak to our families, our children and things like that. We, you know, as, as an Imam, I am worried about our community because I also sit as the head of, uh, 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 of mediation arbitration at the MGC. The adults of today, they want to jump in and fight one another. There's no more talking and things like that. They want to run with each other to court. They want to first fight each other and things like that. And one has to ask yourself, adults, what are you teaching our young people? So this is not something just confined to a mortuary thing that has just jumped so up now. It's a much broader but, but, but perspective. If you, if you would, uh, just to sum up uh, the salient points where we are at the moment, uh, what do we see in the next couple of weeks? What can our community expect to see if something goes wrong in the community? Yeah. Um, is there going to be still some more delays? I know that it might be difficult to project all of that, but what is the current possible projection? Well, there is no projection at the moment. While the Department of Health had said that at the moment the turnaround time is six days uh, uh, for a body because of the caseload, the Muslim Judicial Council has completely rejected that. And the MEC has noted that. And they have to work around to bring down that uh, time frame is unacceptable by us. Um, but what they are saying at the moment is that they do have the heavy case load and they're asking the community to have patience with them. It's almost like they're saying, we've done this before for you. We have shown you our commitment. So therefore now we ask you to have patience. And the bodies that have come in, we've seen that there has been a continuous role. They also promised where there are uh, people that have said, we don't know when is this body is coming out that they will supply them with a timeline so that at least they know what is going to happen because many questions that have come up on the Facebook have said uh, we don't know when our bodies is coming, we don't know what's going to happen, we don't know when to have the janaza and things like that so those are the things that they promised that they would fulfill so we will be monitoring this and inshallah ta'ala in one month's time we come back to that meeting again and see what improvements there they are and in the meantime the Muslim Judicial Council will also see what is the solutions that we can come up with as a Muslim community. Sheikh, just two, two things in conclusion, two, two very quick things in conclusion. Uh, one is that people are saying that um, they're asking, is the MJC doing enough to resolve the problem? Um, are they being forceful enough? Now, I know that, that Sheikh, yourself and a few others have been in meetings, but for some other reason, there's a notion out there that's saying that they're not doing enough. What's his response to those people? The response is that we have people on the ground, we are be dealing with people who can make a change. And um, if people ask how tough we were, let me tell you that when we walked out of the meeting, the president of the MJC told me, Ya Allah Sheikh, what are you jihadi or something, the way you're going on with the minister and the Department of Health and things like that and so on. So we were very tough in that meeting. We were not afraid to ask the tough questions. And um, But let's give the people a, a chance and see what happens. And in the meantime, we'll also look for solutions and make uh, suggestions, inshallah. Just, uh, as, as a last point, I don't want to put you in a precarious position with this one, but I think that uh, perhaps maybe there's an education process around death and I feel that and I spoke to a pathologist uh, Professor Martin I think yeah um, and she said that there's a dire need for people also to understand the processes and why an autopsy happens and why the state requires an autopsy from an evidentiary point of view yes so to make sure that when we get to court six months down the line and the body is already more than halfway yes. decomposed yes. Yes. how are we going to find evidence so that needs to happen however the question I, I want to pose, just in conclusion, is that we find a situation where we look at the rulings, 
what is the actual, actual base skeletal ruling that can either accommodate the delay or not accommodate the, the delay from a Sharia perspective? Look, from a Sharia perspective, so the Sharia do uh, acknowledge and allow where there is criminality involved that um, if a post-mortem or an autopsy needs to be done and the body needs to be put into a fridge, that that is not considered as dishonoring the, uh, the sanctity, the of, sanctity the of, the, of the body. Mm -hmm. And where the post-mortem needs to be done, then Islam and our Sharia says it, if it's something that needs to be done because a crime has been committed or something to that effect needs to be found out, because, then it has to be done. But you, uh, you cannot come back six months later and find out that post-mortem has not been done and people want to go to court and things like that and then we have prevented that from our point. Islam doesn't, Islam is a practical religion. Islam would allow for an autopsy to be done, inshallah. Thank you, Sheikh. Um, we hope to catch up with you soon again uh, to find out if there's more uh, changes, if the situation changes, and if there's any developments. However, I must state that I think that when we as a community go into any issue, I think that we must try and perhaps separate the issues, and that is that perhaps the answer lies in a collective answer, mm. and that might be the community, the ulama, the expertise, and perhaps people sitting on the side that maybe can offer solutions. I, I don't think that we need to get into a finger-pointing situation in any situation. Um, I don't know if she just wants to comment I, on the I, conclusion I think on that. that it's important for the community where they think that they have expertise and they want to offer expertise and things like that, or offer advice to come to the MJC. We have not had uh, 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 one person, we've had many people that have contacted us, doctors, pathologists, um, business people that have come up with advice. So what we are saying at the MGC, we are open, come forward and speak to us inshallah ta'ala and we see how we can work together and how we can find solutions for the benefit of our community. There is not one person or one organization that we had said, listen, sorry, we're not interested in you. We are the kingpins here and we're handling now. Wallahi not. Not at all. We have welcomed everybody that has come forward. Thank you, Sheikh. Well, uh, we hope to keep you updated soon as we go along. If there's any other information that comes forth, we'll put that through. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.